Welcome to Satisfactory. My name is Nilas and I have yet another beautiful, quite big build for you uh, that we're going to be showing off today. I am super proud of this build. This is my Satisfactory Towers. They are going to take care of all of our aluminium needs for this uh, factory forever and ever. So let's have a look at this. This is already created. So what I uh, want to do, I was sort of contemplating on how I would want to de demonstrate this. But I think that it, um, the most engaging part would be just showcasing how it works because it's a it's a pretty elaborate build it uh, has uh, the, the key parameters that i always go for and that is uh, making sure that our builds are modular so you can build some of it as you wish and then uh, continue to expand it we're going to take a look at some of the key design choices that i've made this is what each of the tower is going to do it consists of six layers so all of these divided by six is converted to one layer uh, the input into each tower is the same, 1200 bauxite, 1200 water coming in, and then it uh, gets converted into with the sloppy alumina recipe. Uh, this one is the sloppy alumina, and uh, let's see, alumina, this is the recipe basically we're using is the one that I demonstrated in my earlier simple sloppy uh, and something alumina build. So that is linked up in the corner right now. So if you want to see sort of the design part of that one, uh, but what we want to do is we want to make the simple one here. Uh, this is just getting more complicated with more silica and uh, the improvement in yield is kind of irrelevant. So we continue until the next one, then we get to the scrap. And then I'm going to use the default recipe because that use coal. I don't want to use the Coke part. Uh, it also has a very nice uh, ratio here that if we look at this part, it takes exactly 240 inbound, while the other one takes 180 inbound. So if I take 240 inbound, that is exactly my output from the sloppy alumina. So that means they are corresponding one to one. So that is why I'm going to use that. Then from there on, I get uh, 360 scrap per level. And that I will bring in to uh, uh, bring into the scraps. Uh, this is the scrap recipe. Yes. And then we get the scrap. I'll get that simply with a simple alternate recipe, the one that is, uh, yeah, the simpler recipe here. Uh, again, we don't want to use the silica and have a silica loop. We are going to use this loop instead. Very simple, get it uh, in. So we have 360 per level, gets into 180, and the 180 will then be used to either make aluminum al sheets <laughs> in one and uh, this recipe for uh, casing in the other. So let's have a look at how this recipe actually works. The first thing we get is we get a bauxite location here uh, we can look at the train station because that is also a way that uh, but kind of an elaborate way of uh, splitting it what i want to make sure of is that each we get a bit of a split so basically i take these two wagons they'll go into one belt and the next two wagons will go into the other belt and similarly for the top ones they will go over here so if you don't have enough then uh, because these are not exporting sort of consistently they don't serve as a balancer then it'll be kind of random so make sure you get enough inbound it's 2400 bauxite per minute that you need inbound for the whole thing to operate at full uh, full capacity or full rate and uh, what i'm going to do is i will just uh, delete some stuff here in here so we can get that going we want to make sure that the, we see the whole thing in operation not in uh, in idle state. Come on, hold down control. There we go. Good. And let's move on over to one of the towers and then we can see how each of the levels are working, what each tower is uh, is built. First of all, if you are a patron supporter of the channel, you get access to the save game. So you can always just download the save game and take a peek for yourself. Uh, what I'm doing here is I have a tower that is uh, octagon octagonal. Yes. It's not a uh, hexagon, hexagon. it's an octagon. So here is, basically it is six tiles on that side and there's also six tiles here. And then I just uh, make a line uh, at, accordingly. And then I of course make a rating so I don't fall out despite the fact that I'm on a jetpack. We'll go through this part here. If you want to uh, build it yourself, then once you've built the outer structure, then you start it up basically by making the alignment splitter here. And then that will be placed here. Then you can basically from there, that's actually how I do it. I get it in here. So we get all the things in on the side. This is the sloppy alumina recipe. And this is the aluminum scrap. And then we get in here and we just convert it into six different locations. They each take 60 in and then we'll go into the other location. You can see it's fully saturated. We get the copper supply in as well. And that will work exactly uh, as it should be like that. 
I will just immediately jump on over to the other location, the other tower, because this is taking care of alumina casing. The recipe is exactly the same here. And also this part is exactly the same. Then it goes into the exactly the same six smelters. And then the only difference is that I will have less of these here. We are seeing a bit of a, or we basically we have, we see that it's not uh, the, what's it called? The manifold pattern here hasn't been filled up. I scale this down to 60% so that it consumes 90, corresponding to one, two, three smelters and 90 over here. That means our total for each of these level is 135 casings, or in the case of the other one, 180 uh, sheets. We are going to need all the sheets for our classic batteries, which will be the next mega project to build. Now there are a couple of cool details here that I want to show you how that's built. The first one is this part. How do we make it, make these uh, sitting along here? Because you can't, can't get them in here. Uh, you can't get them to go across so the trick is press e then you get the road barrier road barrier is magical because it can rotate many different ways so you can build, make it actually accordingly press e again to switch over to the other part here then we can make it and then we just align it towards the same and depending on sort of with a bit of experience you figure out where you want to make it so that it fits quite nicely with the, uh, the location so that's one of the little design trips you get from watching this video the other little design trip is how do you make something that goes up along the side all the way up and then branches in at each level well the way i do it is this way so we bring it in at this uh, location i'm actually going to redo this build so that we can kind of see how it works because i think that's uh, easier than just rebuild okay so the first thing i need to do is i need to get it in here and we need to be able to branch it so i'm going to take these two levels out then from here we can get that's continuing and this is continuing upwards until we hear a little click then we are going to get from here just down and then we can get from that side into this location and we branch it from and you can see all of these are 90 degree turns and it works absolutely wonderful and then it continues of course it works as a manifold so that means it takes half of it in here and half of it continues to go up uh, but you know if you have enough uh, supply then it will work those are kind of the two design design uh, parameters that i use for this but uh, also if we look at the supply side of uh, of this part we are going to jump all the way down. Everything is, of course, well, the only thing we're going to get inbound here, basically, is the bauxite coming from train stations. Uh, we have some train over here. We have bauxite here around location. And it doesn't matter where it is because we can now get it into this location. Uh, in this tower, the aluminum alclad, alclad aluminum sheets, then we need uh, a lot, not a lot of copper. We only need 10 for each of these. That means we need 60 per level. That's 360 in total. That's... Uh, Look at that, 10 here. So 360 water in total. That's not very much. And that means I have built 10 refineries, each of them working at 37.5. So we have uh, exactly, well, we have 375 outbound. And that means it should stockpile. So I made a slight oversupply of copper, which is really nice. So it just fills up as it should be. Great. This is, of course, the pure copper ingots which means we need the copper ingots not a lot of copper ingots it goes from 6 to 15 is a massive improvement in in yield and then we of course need some water inbound and again the water is not much here this is 10 water so it's uh, 100 water here on the other side because the recipe over at uh, the other location here is slightly different let's get on over and take a look at that recipe we can take any level because any level here is uh, completely the same and we'll go on to this one. Uh, this is, is taking quite a bit more. So it takes 45 plus another 45 here. So it's 90 per level. And uh, that will be uh, 540. Yeah, 540. So now we need to produce 540 water uh, or copper ingots. And that's what we're producing over on this side though. Because what I'm doing is I'm simply adding up another point here. This is uh, just making it 150. That means I get 56 and I have 10 of them. So it's 560 and I need 540. So as long as we get that, it's absolutely not a problem. 
Uh, the one thing though is uh, do we have enough copper coming in? And the answer to that should be yes. Uh, we also do, we're also going to be needing a bit more water in here. So this will be 15 water. Ah, you know what? I know why that was, I'm not producing enough. It's because the last two are not hooked up. There. That should solve the things, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That will be much better. So this will be where this one was 100 water. Then this is 150 water. So a total of 250 water. And what are we having? We are producing 300. So again, slight surplus of water, slight surplus of uh, copper coming in. We just have a single. Uh, line up here uh, in terms of how much we need we need 15 and this is 22.5 so we need uh, 150 plus 225 so it's another 375 so it's not really very much copper we need in order to feed 900 copper outbound so this is the copper part we get the water dedicated for this location each of these locations uh, when we look at the water because there's also a trick to the water and uh, that is where we need to go over here because there is a water loop this one is producing 120 water per loop and that means it goes back and then uh, this one will be consuming 200 water so actually the 180 water uh, 120 water coming here just need to make sure that we only supplement it with another 80 water coming from the main line so we can make sure that we don't overfill it so it jams and then can't get rid of it this one is flowing nicely in here and uh, this one just keeps pumping that means we don't need I can't remember what it was that we had uh, originally, but it was certainly more than one pipe one pipe going in of water. It was 720 going in, but we don't actually need 720. Well, actually, if this one we needed 200, then we needed 1200 water coming in, but we don't. We only need 80 per level times 60, so it's 420. So I'm pumping in 600 water to make sure that we have uh, ample pressure all the way up. The way I do this here is just a branch off and then push it further up and it works absolutely flawlessly as well here we can see the inputs we're just getting two parallel inputs one going for the three levels on top and the other one goes for the three levels at the bottom that's how we split it each of those will carry 600 inbound as well now as we move up uh, here is another little trick that i have done i have uh, built uh, what's it called a separate electrical network that is uh, exclusive for each one and exclusive for the light so we can actually change the light in the entire factory like this but given uh, all of the current situation and all of that let's see uh, blue or yellow it seems to be a very uh, appropriate color to celebrate these days and uh, therefore we have with the blue shade over the yellow factory and it looks absolutely amazing uh, it also looks a bit like an Ikea factory. And then at the top of it, we just make a bit of an architecture thing. I kind of like these kind of uh, girders and a glass. And then, of course, make a radar tower on top just to finish off the aesthetic look of this uh, this build. I think this is a super nice build. It uh, works exactly as we want it. And we have two identical towers next to each other. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, this means that we now have on our train network if we go back over here on our train network take a look at that we will now have a station that gets uh, here uh, let's see for this one this this station over here will be getting 1080 aluminum sheets every minute and this one here is going to get 100 and 810 aluminum casing per minute as well and those will now be ready to be sent out into the network into the next factory next factory will be a battery factory as well so that we can make some batteries and we can get like a massive uh, build of uh, of the drones so we can do a good drone factory and that's kind of the essence of what we want to do moving forward with this base uh, i have decided that i want to stream this only on uh, on sundays so if you're interested in this uh, satisfactory series then uh, by all means come by on sundays at 8 p.m central european time this is at twitch tv slash needles and of course if you are enjoying this uh, series then uh, do check it out uh, or do make sure that you like the videos because uh, it's a lot of work to build these kind of things and uh, i do very much enjoy it and i really want to continue with it if there is a continued interest so uh, thank you very much for watching for s liking and subscribing ah oh that would be that would have been so clean there we go Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care and stay effective.